Okay, let's do two more. This one, not only do they ask you to write the, the continuity interval, but also they want you to classify the discontinuities. So classifying means that you're referring to as removable or non-removable discontinuities. Now for these kind of problems that look like you can do factoring, that's the first thing that you want to do. You want to factor it because you'll be able to see whether you have a hole or if you have a vertical asymptote, what's happening there. So in this case, for this one, I want to factor it. So x minus 3, in the bottom I have x plus 3, x minus 3. Okay. And what I notice about that is that I have the x minus 3's, I can cancel and that's going to leave me with 1 over x plus 3. Now, when you talk about discontinuities, you do not want to use the final reduced product. You want to always go back to the original one. In the original problem, before I factored anything, both 3 and negative 3 are not going to work because in that case you're dividing by 0. So as far as discontinuities are concerned, you're going to have both 3 and negative 3. So if you're trying to find the interval where it's continuous, Okay, it's basically everything except for negative 3 and 3. So how you write that, you'll go negative infinity to negative 3, negative 3 to 3, and then from 3 to infinity. So basically what that's saying is that you're including everything except for 3 and negative 3. Everything before it and between them and afterwards are included. Okay, so you, again, they only want the intervals of continuity here, so it's continuous on this particular interval. Now, for the ones that are not continuous, we want to classify them as removable or non-removable. Anytime that you have a factor like this that cancels out from the top and bottom, at that x value, you're going to have a hole. So when you cancel these out, the part that cancels out, you're going to set that equal to 0. If I take x minus 3, set it equal to 0, I'm going to get 3. So 3 is basically going to be, 3 is a removable discontinuity. Okay, Why is it removable? Because there's a hole at 3. So anywhere you have a hole, that's removable because you could assign an x value to plug up that hole. And so in that case, 3 is a re removable discontinuity. Now, what you're left with here, after you cancel it out, is you end up with this. Now, no matter what, you're going to have a vertical asymptote at negative 3, and there's nothing that you can do to change that fact. Anytime you have a vertical asymptote, you have one part going up and one part going down. That means that there's a separation in the graph, and that can't be filled up by a hole. So anytime you have a vertical asymptote, that's going to be considered a non-removable discontinuity. The part that makes the bottom equal to 0 is going to be negative 3. So you're going to say negative 3 is a non-removable discontinuity. Okay, so 3 is removable, negative 3 is non-removable. Let's take a look at this next example. For this one, we're going to do the same thing. We want to factor the top and bottom. Okay, so the top is just like it is. The bottom one we can factor. Factors of 15 that add up to negative 2, we can use 3 and 5. And we're going to do negative 3 and a positive 5. So, when we factor it, we notice that nothing cancels from the top. So we have discontinuities at negative 5 and also at, or positive 5 and negative 3. So when we write our interval notation, we're basically going to say that we're going to include all numbers except for negative 3 and positive 5. So this is how that would look as far as interval notation is concerned. Negative infinity to negative 3, negative 3 to 5, and then from 5 to infinity. Okay, so that's the places where it's going to be continuous. As long as you're on one of these three intervals, that means it's continuous at that point. The only place it's not continuous is at negative 3 and positive 5. That's what makes each of the bottom ones equal to 0. Now let's classify them as removable or, or non-removable. Because nothing cancels. If nothing cancels, that means you do not have a hole there at that point. That means that there's going to be vertical asymptotes at negative 3 and negative 5. So because of that, if you have a vertical asymptote there, that's considered a non-removable discontinuity. So you're going to say negative 3 and 5 are non-removable discontinuities. Both of them are going to be considered non-removable because, again, they, they make up a um, vertical asymptote. So therefore, because of that, nothing you can do to plug in that hole non-removable.